So we've all seen the stories uh, this morning considering the fact that Boris Johnson is considering uh, basically just ripping up the withdrawal agreement and just abandoning the talks altogether. Now, why on earth is he doing this? Well, I've said before that Boris Johnson, like many Brexiteers, have drunk their own Kool-Aid. They have somewhat under the misguided belief that the, um, the EU does deals at the last minute. So Boris Johnson has seemed to, well try and force the EU to do a deal at the last minute by, well, setting his own deadline on the 15th of October, when the EU's is the end of October. Now, I don't think there's going to be any move. However, interestingly enough, we are in a bizarre situation. And I've said before that sometimes in Brexit, you really don't know what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> you really don't. But... But this could all just be, as I've initially even said in the video that I released this morning, this could be all just one massive game of, of brinkmanship. Because at the end of the day, Johnson needs this deal. He really, really does. And I, this can't be better said than um, I came across this, uh, this article uh, in The Guardian exactly discussing this. Look, he needs a deal. He can't get around the fact. So, uh, like I say, this comes from The Guardian. And it basically says, the uh, title is, Ignore Boris Johnson's bluster. He still wants and needs a deal with the EU. So, negotiations with the EU over a trade deal resume tomorrow. And insults and acrimony flying between the two sides today. Boris Johnson has warned... That if, no, that if no agreement is in place uh, by an EU leader summit on the 15th to 16th of October, he will walk away from the talks without a deal, describing this as a, quote, good outcome. And we all know it is not going to be a good outcome. We've seen the government's own impact reports on what a no deal does to this country. And those are the... Um, conservative efforts i think it's going to be much worse and a lot of economists think it's going to be much worse especially in the situation that we're in now so there are even rumors that the government is preparing to ditch parts of the withdrawal agreement it signed with the eu last year this brinkmanship and bluster is designed to put pressure on the eu and should be taken with a pinch of salt the real deadline for the talks has always been mid-november so there's still plenty of time to do a deal. More importantly, Johnson needs and wants one. The latest flare-up is because of the lack of progress now uh, uh, on now three well-publicised issues. The, uh, the access EU fishermen will retain to UK waters, how to organise the overall relationship, police it and resolve disputes in the event uh, that they emerge, and crucially, the government's unwillingness to share its plans for subsidising UK industries once the transition period <coughs> uh, expires on the 31st of December. For all the cautious optimism in Brussels that followed Johnson's meeting with the European Commission President, Ursula von der Leyen, in June has completely evaporated. The more frequent negotiating rounds, um, the fact that they were face to face and the multiple private dinners between the two lead negotiators, David Frost and Michel Barnier, has not translated into progress, uh, into progress in the negotiating room. According to multiple senior EU officials, Frost has not been given the political guidance he needs to, string the big, uh, to strike the big compromises. This is not surprising. Not only is Johnson heavily distracted by COVID-19, but Dominic Cummings, Johnson's most influential advisor, is driving a very hard line on state aid, insisting that the government retains as much freedom as it possible to subsidise high-tech firms. This freedom is also seen by Johnson as his, and as his central to his, quote, levelling up agenda. A challenge exacerbated by the coronavirus recession. The cabinet is also very divided on state aid. One reason why it has not reached a decision despite the blinding pressure uh, of the EU negotiations, 
that whether these developments are, are concerned largely depends on whether one believes that the 15th to 16th October EU summit deadline can be pushed back. Despite Johnson's statement today, it can be. No one in Brussels expects any progress this week. The next time officials will meet will be the 28th of September, two and a half weeks prior to the EU summit. That makes it highly unlikely a deal will be in place by then. Senior EU officials have therefore been discussing the idea of another summit, say towards the end of the month. Barnier also wants to debrief EU leaders on the 24th, 25th of September, when they plan to discuss the Greek-Turkish tensions in the eastern Mediterranean, the situation in Belarus and the relations with Russia, in the hope that this could unblock talks. There is even chatter of another, quote, high-level meeting between Johnson and, uh, and von der Leyen in early October as well. It is therefore possible that EU leaders more responsible and less reckless than Johnson's operation will attempt to inject more momentum into these talks and more space for them to succeed. Working in tandem with Barnier, as one senior EU official says, we will be the last ones to turn off the lights. If there is progress, it's highly unlikely Johnson will walk away. This is because he needs a deal. After a poor performance on coronavirus and with a jobs crisis looming, he needs a success story. No deal would be portrayed by his opponents as a failure. It would lend itself to a rejuvenated Labour opposition main line of attack. The general charge of incompetence, which is a difficult label for any government to throw off. As well as letting Labour's new leader, Keir Starmer, uh, back into the Brexit game, where he has had to tread very carefully... Uh, given his support for a referendum last year. No deal would also play into the hands of the Scottish National Party ahead of a crucial election to the Scottish Parliament next May. It would boost Nicola Sturgeon's chances of winning an overall majority and claiming a mandate for a second independence referendum. Ministers are increasingly nervous that a Scottish breakaway is on the cards. The Cabinet was recently briefed that the latest opinion polls shows at least a 56% for Scots would, want, would vote for independence, and just 44% to stay. Business leaders are also lobbying MPs, warning that a double COVID-19 and a no-deal Brexit would blow would be a disastrous for jobs. This plays into the politics. Tory MPs representing the former Labour heartland seats in the North and the Midlands are unnerved by surveys suggesting that they would be among the areas hardest hit by no deal. As one of them put it, the message has been relayed to number 10, it needs to get its act together. These factors will push Johnson towards compromise by the real deadline, which is mid-November. This is because in order to implement the deal by the 1st of January, six to eight weeks will be needed to convert the legal uh, political argument into, le into agreement into legal text. This text will then have to be scrubbed and reviewed by lawyers on both sides for accuracy, consistency and meaning translated into the Union's 24 official languages and signed off by the European Parliament. But even mid-November does not leave the two sides much time. Unfortunately, until, until then, Europe remained trapped in a guessing game because, as one senior EU official told me, not one political figure or, or official in Brussels or any EU capital can vouch for the real intentions of the government. So, as, as you said there, yeah, he needs a deal. He really does need a deal. And be under no illusion, a lot of these new, um, as was said there, a lot of the new, quote, northern and um, midland labour heartlands uh, conservatives, which they're sitting in, have been bombarded, not only by business leaders, but... A, a, given the coronavirus, they're the ones who've been making the most noise about you know, students returning back to school. They are concerned. They don't want to be one-term MPs. They want to try and actually continue that. And given the polling, you know, those, those votes have now gone up for grabs when you withdraw Brexit from that equation. It is all to play for in the next general election. And the big test will be, will be, the next local elections. Of course, we were meant to have them in May. They've been put off until next year. So that will be the first big test for Johnson. And if he fails, 
that test, if those MPs see that their councils don't turn blue or remain solid, solidly red, as many of them are now, then they will start to sound some serious alarm bells. Politically, they will be the ones to force Johnson to do something. And either way, he has to get that deal because that will mean, as was said there, no, the jobs will go. And those are the areas that will be hardest hit. And it will just be completely open season on Johnson until either A, he goes, and even if he does go, that won't remove the the general fact of incompetence from the from the Tory party. You know, come the next general election, we could see them wiped out in certain areas. It's it's a possibility, but who knows? Um You know, who knows? But well again, we'll have to see. So but the worry line is at the end. Even they do not know what the true intentions of the government actually are. And as is usual, we're in this situation because there was no plan, and still is no plan. But there you go. So, uh, as always, please do like and share and share this video around. And please, if you're new, do hit that subscribe button. We do talk about uh, politics, British politics, be precise, as well as Brexit. Because, quite frankly, at the moment, you can't talk about one without the other. And trust me, this is only just the beginning of the beginning. So, with that said, uh, please do also remember, if you'd like to support the channel in another way, there are links down below uh, to my Patreon page, as well as a one-off donation link, should you like to support the channel that way. And, as always, see you all next time.